taxpayer money. Our next guest says, think about this. Uh, just paying the interest on the debt will be our biggest expense, north of a trillion dollars, compared to roughly $700 billion for defense. CNS News Editor Terry Jeffrey. Terry, if that isn't mind-numbing enough, I, we have to consider, as I know you have, the rising cost of interest rates and that, by definition, carrying that debt. Huh? Right. I mean, uh, Neil, we've been paying historically very low interest rates on the, on the marketable federal debt, a little over 2%. It can go a lot higher than that. It could easily triple, and we'll end up paying a trillion dollars more a year just on the federal debt. You know, in his budget, if you look at his budget message to Congress that President Trump published on Monday, he said that the fiscal path we're on is unsustainable. He's right. But then he sends up a budget that's going to add $8.7 trillion to the publicly held debt of the United States. It's untenable. But you know what else is untenable? This ridiculous is that we have money to strategically invest. I know a lot of people are criticizing uh, the president's uh, infrastructure plan, uh, the $200 billion up front of federal money that would be leveraged to be about $1.5 trillion. Fine. Whoever figures how that's going to work, please let me know. But the, the thing I get a kick out of is the criticism that the $200 billion federal upfront money is not enough. And I'm thinking, does anyone read about this debt, the accumulating deficits. Uh, there's a lot of time taken to discern whether we have the money for a tax cut, one and a half trillion over 10 years, and everyone ignores the additional 10 trillion in spending that will accompany that in the next 10 years. It's like an upside down world. Well, it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, and the truth is that tax revenue has been growing. In the first four year, months of this fiscal year, the federal government has taken in more in real tax revenues than in any fiscal year ever before. So the federal government's getting more money. But for the course of that fiscal year, we're still $175 billion in debt because they spent that much more than they brought in. The problem is not the revenue. The problem is the spending. And when you have Republicans in Washington calling for more spending, that's a big problem because the, the American people need real advocates of limited government in Washington, D.C., who understand the fiscal crisis we face down the road if we don't change the direction of the federal government. And right now, we don't have those voices in Washington who are in positions of power. You know, um, you bring up some fascinating numbers, as you always do, and I don't care whether the people on the right or left of this issue, but we've been averaging about um, 2.5%, 2 2.3%, actually, on our debt, of the, the interest rate. Um, this goes actually back to 2001. Now, uh, I'm sorry, it, it was much higher, 2001, when it was 6.6%, but it could get back to that. And if it were to get back to that, that potentially adds hundreds of millions a year, trillions over the course of the next 10 years, and no one's saying that. No, it, it, it's not. And, you know, another part of it, Neil, is that the, the federal debt, they divide it into two parts. There's the publicly held debt, most of which right. is marketable debt which the Treasury is selling and people are paying that interest on. Then they have what the Treasury calls the intergovernmental debt, which is now still over $5 trillion. Incredible. But that's the money they essentially stole out of the Social Security trust funds and other trust funds, and the government is theoretically going to pay back to itself. But over time, the intergovernmental debt is going to go away as the Social Security program and Medicare, et cetera, run a deficit. And all of the debt is going to be publicly traded debt that the Treasury needs to sell to people who are willing to buy it. And the public's going to demand a much higher interest rate in the future to buy that debt to keep the government going. So not only are we going to be paying more than a trillion dollars in interest on the debt, we're going to need to float new debt every single month in order to keep funding the things that now a Republican Congress is ready to appropriate money for. Terry, do you think growth... You get, and I know the Atlanta Fed is looking at five plus percent growth in the first quarter. I don't know if that's going to materialize or not, but you pick up growth. I, I, I understand that can address a lot of sins, but it doesn't address all the sins. No, it doesn't. And if you look at the historical pattern, federal revenues increase when economic growth increases. Right. So you have the supply side argument cut tax rates, that spurs economic growth, that spurs increased revenue. But also, when you look at the historical pattern, even when revenue increases tremendously because of economic growth, federal spending increases more, and we continue to have deficits and pile on the debt. We never are paying down the debt. The question is how much bigger of a deficit we, do, we have to build an even bigger debt. Eventually, we're going to hit the wall, Neil. And if interest rates go up, the moment when we're going to hit the wall is going to be closer and closer.
All right, thank you very much, my friend. I thought that was a sobering reminder. We need to get it out there because eventually we're going to have to address this, Republicans, Democrats, everybody, because that 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 trend uh, appears to be. Un